of, ah, because of the taping. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, so uh, good morning, all. Thank you for the early horizon for coming. And um, I hope we'll have a great session. I'll be your chairman as well, because Wolfgang couldn't make it. So um, I hope we'll enjoy, and it will justify the early rise. Um, the first talk, I'm giving the first talk. And uh, the first talk, as you can see, uh, talks about the micro is it a problem? It's good running in the morning. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I'll talk on the micro and macro environment. Actually, you know, through the two days that you, we have been here, we were talking mainly on, uh, on the micro. We were talking mainly on from the cell to the protein to the liposomes and so on. Sometimes it was mentioned, and nowadays we know be much better. We know that uh, it's our, if I'm speaking about disease signature in general, but any effect, it's a combination of all, and I want at least uh, touch this base. So the, the main goal is, for, for the way I see it, is to define precise, or if you want to say personalized, if you are American or if you are European, personalized disease signature. And actually to look on the broadband, on the big picture, on the micro and macro environment, and, and, um, and embed as much features and as, as much parameters and much, as much mechanism as we can. So if we are talking about that, what we really want to do is to identify uh, the clinical um, uh, features, but the clinical that could be interpreted both at the clinics and at the lifestyles and so on. So this is the second goal. And the last one, um, and it actually it provides a lot of barriers, but the last one is really to combine all our knowledge that we captured so far with the data. Not only the data, not only uh, what we have either from science or, or research or from the hospitals. So this is um, the big goal that we are talking about. And actually, we t uh, th this saying was said many years ago, starting in 2003. And then by, by the NSF, and, and uh, you see the, the mentioned book, but then what was really done practically? And I want to move uh, forward in the practical way. And when we are talking to combine uh, all this micro and macro environment, or the knowledge and data, there are many barriers on our way. And, and those barriers that were mentioned so many times, and nowadays, it, are being a huge criticism against um, really the analysis um, up to the clinical trials, and we heard a lot of that. And actually, uh, with the buzzword of big data, we don't have really big data. We have actually small data. We will never have enough repetition. We will never have enough patient. We will never have enough, a big enough group to analyze all the parameters we want, especially if we are talking on the micro and macro environment. And thus, we won't be able to be as reliable, not replicable, not reproducible, and I don't want to go in all this uh, big uh, fuss that nowadays. In general, uh, if I want to say, I mean, we invested a lot, and we saw in this meeting in nano, in the mechanism, in the biology, much less in the tools to analysis to provide reliable and applicable tools, but we will talk about that later. Uh, so I want to give you one example, one big example uh, from the Human Brain Project. How did we do what I'm trying to preach for? Combining the knowledge and data. And the Human uh, Brain Project is a very big fuss. And um, we were, I, I was responsible on the medical informatics and the idea was to really identify as much as we can the brain disease signatures. So uh, without going too much, so we started with a physician, with the knowledge captured by the physician, his, uh, his understanding, his decision, his 
um, if, if, I, if I may say the skulls. And uh, we start from that and we combine it with the clinical hospital data and we embedded five hospitals. And I don't, want, I don't need to tell you what is the big barrier on combining different physician, different hospital data. The variance is huge. The definitions are different. The treatment and the regulation are different. It's very hard. So that's one big fuss, but still we have clinical data and combine it with the scientific cohort. So uh, for, you know that everything is very well addressed and, and kept, uh, you know, the, the anonymization and, and security and so on, but I want to run very fast. And then the idea of combining all that is to enable the analysis, to enable the analysis while, while utilizing all the possible analytical uh, tools, all what we developed, and to develop new targeted one, and I'll present the one that we developed. But as I said, before doing that, we need to go through a very torturing process of pre-processing of the data, of preparing the data, and so on, and of um, some simulation modeling to ensure that the tools that we are using are the proper one or the best possible one. So that's what we did, and I'll give you an example of, of our uh, analysis that we did uh, in order to, to ensure um, the, the disease ID, as I call it, to ensure reliable, replicable results. So uh, what we did is um, start from the ADNI database. It's a very well-known database. It's an American uh, cohort that thousands of papers were published. But if you look on the data, you see that the best predictors are the missing values. I mean, if you just so how could people analyze this data? So that's what we did. Um, we, we first of all did the pre-processing to, to ensure that we have the right cohort. And then we started, as I said, from the physician, for he, from his five diagnoses. Um, and, and actually, his assigned diagnoses were made up, up upon seven features. This was decision we interviewed, we asked, and we checked. And then we went up and we took the whole data, and you see a little bit of it here, 191 parameters, and then we shrinked it. Uh, we started with, as I said, with the physician. We went to the analysis, supervised and, uh, supervised and unsupervised analysis. We, we get, we, reduce the number of features, we defined clusters, and I just want to show you, because we are very short on time, what happened, what, what did we really reach. So this is just the running. So at the top, uh, you, you will see what we uh, achieved. At the bottom, you see the five assigned diagnoses by the physician. And now you can see that uh, those assigned diagnoses were mixed. And we can see at the upper level our very well-defined separate 10 new subtypes that weren't known. And we went to investigate on these uh, subtypes. I, I couldn't go very further, as I said, because of uh, the lack of time. So uh, at the top, you can see one. Uh, actually, I'm presenting two of the subtypes, two out of the 10 that we identified. The first, of, uh, the first is the atypical uh, Alzheimer disease. And uh, it, uh, really, it, it um, uh, uh, if, you, if you look on each of them, uh, the first one uh, really is the EPOE. We see the EPOE in most of the uh, Alzheimer when we are analyzing the whole cohort, but especially it, it, it's, it's active and it creates some inflammation and so on in only speci some specific subtypes. So this is the first one, the atypical ID. And the second uh, one is the amnestic MCI. And just luckily enough, we went back to the literature to see if somebody identified these subtypes. And we found uh, an Italian group that published, as you can see here at uh, uh, 96, 
and they did clinical trials and they failed because they didn't identify this subtype. We took, we are now in collaboration with that, we took all the original data and we are trying uh, to do the clinical trials again. This is just two subtypes that we identified out of many and we are working on uh, the other uh, eight. So um, just to, to ensure, uh, the message is that we were addressing, uh, you know, the pre-processing, and, and if you can see the yellow spot is just the missing value, but I, I don't have time to go into that. And then what we did, we developed a simulation model to identify the best possible, the optimal tool for each set of data. It's not right that all the tools are relevant to, the, to all the data, and you can see here, um, again, I don't have time, but Speaking about clinical trials, I just want to mention one thing in, uh, regarding clinical trials. Um, the FDR, the FDR was developed by my colleague and he was uh, Professor Joao Benyamini and he was the only one to be quoted in the 100 most quoted paper uh, ever as a statistician. And the reason is the threshold, the false discovery rate. Very few are still using that. And it's a, it, just putting the threshold ensures better results, ensures that you don't leave out the outlier. And that's another point. If we are talking about the Vioxx and other things, the fact is that they had this data, but in regular analysis, you leave out the outstanding or the unexpected case or the outliers, that doesn't matter how you call it. And then, you are facing this problem. So just to mention, because we don't have more time, and I just want to go very fast uh, about what we did further, is to combine all the other human brain project, um, uh, side uh, project or sub project, and then whenever there is a mechanism, we are trying to feedback, to give feedback with the medical data, and the other way around, again, we have to embed all this knowledge. Uh, I will, uh, this presentation will be available, so I will, I'm, go, I'm going very fast. Nowadays, we are working on the Parkinson. I don't have to explain why is Parkinson so ex uh, important, but I just want to show you one slide, which is the micro and macro environment. What could we achieve in this Parkinson if we are looking on the broadband, if we are looking not only, and actually this is the practice. That's what people are doing, but, but I think we, we have to do with the data as well, and uh, the possible outcome, and this is the huge cohort that we are building now at the hospital, and, and uh, we are analyzing uh, people, and we have all the genetics, the large genetic, all their family relatives, all the gates, we are, they, they are really, uh, we are building this huge 400 cohort to be able to look on the broad picture, and another very interesting, uh, um, data is the new natal, which they are screened, especially the early bone and so on, they are screened 24 hours. But here it's just, um, you know, the screening data, not the environmental, but still it's a very interested one and I will be happy, that's another call that we are going to work. Uh, and just to finish, um, uh, we became um, an international site of the NSF Center, which is a combination of uh, industry and academia, and that are the main uh, goals that we want to achieve. Um, actually, to look on, on together with companies and together with other universities, as much as we'll gain knowledge and data and to embed all. So I hope that if we'll have more time, I can say more, and I invite you to talk to me as much as you're interested in, and um, this is, we have to be prepared to reach the right goals. Thank you. So we, we, I went out of time, uh, so if there are uh, questions, so we'll move, ah, okay, yes. Uh, the disease pattern, to establish new so uh, re relation to the disease pattern do you see the value in diagnosis of diseases correct diagnosis or do you see a value for development of new therapeutic uh, strategies you know the, the, 
the main answer is that it's both. Once you will be, let's say, in the very far, uh, far future, when we fly very high, we may understand, we may have a kind of disease signature to a subgroup of a disease as much as we'll be able to be specific. If you understand that, so it's both. It's first of all to understand the mechanism or to understand the disease. And second, to treat it, to treat it precisely or personalized. But as I said, the big buzzwords, we don't, we are not there yet. Neither with the tools nor with the data. Just for one voxel, we need 13 billion people. We will never have them. So, so we have to develop the right tools. I think the big effort nowadays should be to develop the right tool. So we will run to the second uh, presentation. Um, need he? Yeah. So you say your name exactly.